Hello everyone, this game is turning 3 years old and so is my account, which means it's time for another review. First I will quickly go over my character weapon artifact account, money spent and afterwards I show every character I built in detail while rambling off some random stuff about this account or Genshin in general. Speaking of random, if you happen to ask yourself which my 3 favorite characters are right now, then here's your answer. As for everyone else, I'm at 15 limited 5 stars and some of them do actually have constellations. My highest one on this account is Ayaka at C3 right now, then Kazuha C2 and Yai, Hutao and Ganyu C1. As for standards, I'm at 4 out of 7, Kiching and Chichi C5, Diluc C2 and Jean C1. In total that's 23 limited and 17 non-limited characters. I guess you could say I'm doing okay when it comes to winning the 50-50. As for 4 stars, I'm only missing 2, Shinobu and Goro and I have 16 at constellation 6 right now. I guess technically you could say 17 if you include C5 Bennett. As for weapons, I'm at 11 5 stars and if you add up all the refinements on top of that, it's gonna be a total of 20 5 star weapons. Somehow I even ended up with a R5 Primordial Jade Wing Spear. I think I even uploaded the pulls for that, but honestly it was just a tragedy trying to get stuff of home if I remember correctly. And for 4 stars, I have 26 of them at level 90, but honestly it's nothing too special, no crazy weapon banner exclusives or anything like that, it's mostly just free to play stuff. As for artifacts, ironically enough I'm at exactly 350 of them at plus 20. I also put a breakdown on screen of how they are distributed among different sets in case you are wondering which domains I mainly farmed. And of course I won't go over every single one of them, it would take way too long, but you will see the ones I'm using later when I show the builds. To just highlight one of the better ones, I think it's something like for example this feather. And now for one of the more interesting topics to probably a lot of people, how much money did I spend? In total I'm at 595 euros which converts to 635 USD right now. There isn't really a whole lot I can show you, you kind of just have to take my word for it. But to give you a quick rundown, in the first like 6 months of Genshin I bought the battle pass 5 times and spent some actual money on banners here and there. Aside from that I also had the blessing of the Welkin Moon active for the entire time and I plan to continue that at least for now. Now I will show every character and there are a lot so I went a little faster but still the clip almost ended up being 10 minutes long anyway. On this account I use optimizer to it so I'd say they are somewhat min-maxed. If I remember correctly the priority list started with Zhangling, then Yelan, then Ayato and so on. I don't remember the whole thing but those would be my I guess top 3 builds. Anyway, feel free to pause whenever you're interested and while this video is playing, same as every time, I will talk about some random stuff just so that there is something to listen to. If it's distracting, I guess you can always mute me and put on some music to focus on what's ever going on on screen. Alright, if I remember correctly, I created the account on September 29th, 2020, so it's a day 2 account and I think I at least logged in every day to do my 15 minutes of daily stuff like commissions, spending resin and the occasional events or whatnot. What I'm getting at is it's a fairly active account I'd say. I should also point out that I play in two different regions, which I guess most people would just call having two accounts. For Abyss on my main, this one, I do still clear it every time with 36 stars, but on my alt past floor 11, I only do it if I feel like it. If I'm completely honest, I'm not a big fan of the encounter design lately, it feels more annoying than challenging. Same thing for weekly bounty missions. At this point, I'm not short on Mora, so I don't do them every time. Of course, it's temporarily different now that Fontaine is released and with it, its reputation system. As for mini games like the teapot or trading card game, I pretty much ignore them, but I do think they are done well. Personally, it's just not something that excites me very much at this moment. I do visit the weekly shop in the teapot on a semi-regular basis though, it's very much worth it, I'd say. As for external stuff like web events and login rewards on the Hoyo website, I say this every time, I don't participate, I don't like or care for them and too little rewards to go out of my way to force myself to still do them. If you are curious on how much I explored, chest looted and whatnot just to get an idea on how many free resources I acquired, at the end of this build section I will show the statistics from the Hoyo Lab website, everything regarding that is listed there. So in conclusion, yes I am active. 
but for some people it might also kind of be the bare minimum to fit that description. Anyway, now some actual meaningless stalling while this clip runs out. In the beginning I randomly mentioned my three favorite characters and in case you're curious why it's them, I get into it right now. I mean, just visually, you can probably already discern a certain type of aesthetic I prefer. Raiden, Ya and Kazuha are all from Inazuma and I don't know what that means exactly. Maybe my latent weep gene suddenly got active. It is what it is, I guess. In terms of gameplay, Raiden has been one of my favorites since her release really. As for Kazuha, I wasn't feeling it as much at first, but recently I went from C0 to C2 and again, I don't know what it is with me and cooldown resets, but I just love that mechanic. Elemental skill into burst skill into elemental skill again, Kazuha, Yai and Ningguang, all of those were in my top 3 at some point. Personality wise, Ya is unmatched for me. Her says is just too funny. The only one coming close would be Hu Tao. Kazuha's calm and collected and a little mysterious personality is, I guess, what I aspire to be. As for Raiden, A, Makoto, that whole triangle, I like them, but it's not necessarily my favorite. She is a god, so maybe not being able to relate to her might actually be a compliment to the writers. Still, Raiden makes my top three for gameplay and looks alone. What can I say? I guess I'm superficial. <laughs> Now that I derailed from stuff about the account into personal anecdotes, we might as well keep going with it, cause I'd like to elaborate on spending habits and why mine seem to have drastically changed after the first few months of Genshin. Also, just for context, this was the first gacha for me and this might already explain everything, but I'll try to put it into words anyway. First of all, at this point it's probably obvious to everyone, but chances you can get every character without spending money are almost zero. Impossible. In my estimation, I'd say you probably have to spend around $100 on average each month to achieve that, which is something I'm not comfortable with. If you are rich, you might not be able to relate. If you aren't rich, then hopefully you can. So a little after release I came to this realization and about 3 months into the game I committed to a second free to play account just to have access to all the characters. That's basically already where I'm at today. But I tried a couple of other gacha games in the meantime, well I only really played one for an extended amount of time, but the thing they all have in common is these are essentially resource management games which test your patience. In the beginning your account has not much going for it and spending money on a new character actually feels like a meaningful improvement. Going from one 5 star character to two can feel like it makes a difference. The weird thing though is the longer you play, the more comfortable you feel in terms of player power. At this point in Genshin, I have so many characters that I can do all kinds of teams and there's no point in buying gems to pull my 24th copy of a limited character. Also, it's not just player power, same for resource management. Mora, experience books, artifacts, everything starts stockpiling. Not just about characters I like and for those three free to play gems seem to be enough. On top of that, if I compare my $600 account to my free to play account, after over 2 years the difference seems kind of negligible. What I'm getting at is, in a weird way, the longer you play a gacha game, the less sense it makes to spend money and considering the bad pay to win reputation this genre has, this comes a little bit as a surprise to me. I'm actually curious to all Genshin veterans or gacha connoisseurs out there, is this a common viewpoint or am I lo alone with this? Are you are still wailing or has it kind of become meaningless? After talking about it, I realized it might have come across a little depressing, but I wanted to be clear that I think not feeling a need to spend money is a big, like really big positive. Speaking of depressing though, this far into the video I'll take the opportunity to vent some frustrations. Recently I played through Baldur's Gate 3 and no there isn't much to complain, I believe it's already seen as one of the greatest games of all time. Aside from just scope in general, one thing they took to the next level is branching storytelling. And to be clear, I don't expect that from Genshin, that might be a little much to ask from Little Hoyoverse. In general, I do think BG3 is a way more immersive story experience though. What I questioned even before this is, why are there meaningless dialogue options? There is no branching storyline in Genshin and yes I understand that some people might like it for flavor, that's fine, all I'm asking for is an autoplay function which actually works. Let's be honest, in dialogue scenes there usually isn't much going on visually, so I like to put it on auto and listen with wireless headphones while doing some chores for example. 
but then I have to run back to my PC every 10 seconds to click once and it's driving me crazy. I would expect it to be automatic if I use a feature that is literally called that. But to refer back to Baldur's Gate and get a little bit more spicy, what I realized is that a main character getting voice lines is actually doing a lot for me in terms of immersion. I don't think that's gonna happen, they probably have their reasons in Genshin, but to me the main character just feels a little bland. And some people like to say the Traveler is supposed to be an empty canvas for the player to project themselves onto, but then my question would be, why is there no character creation? Either that whole argument falls apart or it's implicitly calling me Hoyo lazy or incompetent, and I for sure don't want to call them lazy. The Traveler is clearly a story protagonist, and even though in my opinion it's a pretty boring one. But I better stop here, it's enough criticism for one video, I don't want to start thinking about Paimon and turn this into an actual rant. I'd love to see equipment or artifact loadouts though to throw one more thing out there, granted this might not be the most controversial thing to say, especially after that hot take before. And that's all I have for now, maybe you got tired of me monologuing anyway. Now that I think about it, I probably should have ended this on a more positive note. Um, Fontaine seems nice so far, there you go. Again, at the end of this clip, after it runs out, which should be in less than a minute, I quickly show the statistics of the Hoyo website. Alright, we made it to the end. These are definitely my favorite videos to make, not necessarily only to share it, but it's also interesting to see for myself how my account developed. But of course, I wouldn't do all of this just for that, so hopefully this was also somewhat entertaining to you as well. Anyway, I'd love to see you back next time, until then have fun and bye bye.